In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to use the clone stamp tool. Uh, in previous tutorials, we've already cleaned up the skin using the Band-Aid icon over here, which is the spot healing tool. We did that on a separate layer, and we just merged our layers up. Today, we're going to talk about the cloning tool. If I click on that, i um, give you an overview on how that works. If you click on that and you have your opacity up at 100%, let's zoom in really close here, and you are on your image, uh, which is your topmost layer, launch a brand new layer at the bottom by hitting the icon here that says create a new layer. And you want to do your cloning on a separate layer than your image uh, always, because otherwise you'll be kind of uh, destructively editing that newest copy or that newest layer. The way that the clone stamp tool works is by holding down your option key, uh, you will see that the brush changes to a smaller kind of uh, round uh, circle with a crosshair between it. And what that's going to do is sample the area that you are holding down option on. And to show you how this works, I'm going to do something really obvious so you get a sense of it. If I hold down option while I'm over the edge of his nose here on the corner, and I click once, it's going to resample that to another part of the photo, essentially mimicking wherever the crosshairs are. So that's basically how it would work. The way we're going to use this tool for the retouch is to make sure you're in a brand new layer, select your clone stamp tool, and set your blend mode to lighten. You can drop down here and set it to lighten. And we're going to take our opacity down to about 30%. Once you have your slider at 30%, your blend mode is set to lighten, and you are in the clone stamp tool, come over to an area of the eye, make your brush a little bit smaller, and hold down your option and select a nicer clean area. We want to take care of these little bags under the eyes, so I'm going to select an area uh, just beneath that that is not as dark. Click once, I've selected that area, and now I'm going to make some quick passes, and you can see that the crosshairs are following the area where I initially made my selection. I'm going to come over to this side and grab a decent area as well. Hold down Option, click once, it samples that area. And now we can kind of brush into these darker areas pretty quickly. We're only using 20 or 30 percent rather, so we're not that heavy-handed. Uh, if you come down to this chin area here, you want to resample whenever you're in a new area. So I'm going to resample this area right around here and kind of drag that in. Clean up this a little bit. Doesn't need much help. I'm going to take a sample from here and clean up this side here and a couple other little areas that seem to be a little bit discolored or have a little bit of uh, you know kind of raised area that we want to clone away some texture of the skin that we want to correct so let's take a look at our before and after if I turn the eye icon off that's before there's the after let's move up into the forehead area and make a bigger brush Take an area right here, looks all right, and let's cut down some of those highlights on the forehead. Let's grab some of the edge here and bring it over. And basically we're taking some quick passes in here, grab a little bit more and cut into some of these lighter colors. There we go. And one more in the center here, just kind of dragging around. So let's take a look at our before and our after. There's our before, there's our after. One of the things I'd like to do on a layer where I've done some clone stamping is to not only drop down the opacity, but before I do that, I'd like to add a little bit of blur. So I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and mine is set at about 4.4 .4 pixels, which is fine. Uh, 4.5 pixels, that's fine. Just say, say OK to that. It adds a little bit of blurring in there, and then we can start moving our opacity slider down so we don't erase so much of the dimension of the face somewhere, let's see what 55% looks like. We still have the kind of appearance of the skin. We haven't really blown out too much of the highs and lows in the face and some of the grain of the skin. 55%. Let's back out of there by hitting Command minus and step back a little bit and see what we've done. Let's turn that layer off and turn it back on. Looks pretty good to me. One of the other things that you can do, some people do this uh, on the same layer, uh, in this situation, it's fairly harmless to do so on the same layer. We've already added a blur to this cloning in this layer. What I'd like to do is add some noise to mimic a little bit of the grain of the skin and to mimic also uh, kind of the look of pores. What you would do is go to the filter menu, drop down to noise and add noise. You'll see a dialog box that comes up. Um, I'd like to show and demonstrate how heavy-handed that can look 
by moving my slider all the way up. You can see that it's actually putting some noise, lots of noise, right over the areas that we already went into with our clone stamp tool. If you drop this all the way down to about 21, let's say even lower than that, 16%, I'm going to go even lower, 11% uh, or so, leave a uh, monochromatic not checked and make sure you are selected uh, uniform instead of Gaussian. You can say OK to that. And what it does is it adds a subtle, subtle grain to the skin. Let's back out of there and take a look at our before, which was here, and there's our after. I hope you learned something um, by using the clone stamp tool and also know that when you're making your adjustments with the clone stamp tool that you're not completely locked in to how you did it on that layer. You can take your opacity down further if you feel like this is a bit too much. You can drop down and drop up as much as you want to to change the uh, way that that clone stamp is laying on the skin and how transparent it's going to be. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and there'll be more up soon. Thank you for watching.